hi good morning everyone let's get started with the next topic for this training session which is on starting and stopping an SAP system okay in this topic we'll be covering about how to stop and start an SAP system and we'll cover different SAP systems that is uh, ABAP based system Java based system ABAP and Java system and we'll cover different versions as well that is the seven versions before 7.0 and versions after 7.1 okay so basically the start process every SAP system has a database and at least one instance an SAP system with a Java stack also has a central services instance a system with an ABAP stack can contain an ABAP central services instance that provides the ABAP NQ service and ABAP message server. In this case, the central instance doesn't have an NQ work process or a message server. An SAP system with the ABAP and Java stack can therefore have two central instances, one for Java and one for ABAP. Okay, let's see basically this figure it is showing the start process of an SAP system if the SAP system has an ABAP central instance or the Java central instance they are started first okay so here you can see instances with NQ but without ABAP dispatcher ABAP is SCS or CS or directly after the start of the database instance with ABAP dispatcher and NQ central instance with ABAP and all other dialog instances so this is basically the sequence of starting so what we have seen is that first the instance with NQ but without ABAP dispatcher that is ASCS which is started first okay then basically here we are seeing how the different instances are started and the sequence in which they are started okay the priority the first priority goes to the ABAP central services instance that is having the priority number one okay the priority number two goes to the central instance with an ABAP dispatcher and an NQ work process. Okay, number three goes to the other dialog instances. So these are the three instances. Just take note that one is first one is ABAP central services instance, second is central instance, third is all other dialog instances. So these are the three things. This is the order basically. So take note that database has to be up before the actual SAP can be started okay so that is the prerequisite okay let's go to the next slide where you are seeing the directory structure for an SAP system you have user SAP under that there is SAP SID and you have these directories like sys global profile exe then you have db dveb mgs 0, 0, or 0, 001 or depending on what is the system number okay here d stand for dialog v is update e is nq b is batch m is messaging g is gateway s is spool okay so this is the directory structure that we'll see this is basically for the abap and java system Okay, the next thing that we are seeing here is start and profile evaluation for the instance. So what happens is that first the start profile, it will start the SAP's start SRV process, which in turn will start SAP CPE, which will sync the kernel folder. And after that, the database, if it is not already started, it will be started. And then the default instance and after that, the instance profile so this is the order in which the starting of a system takes place 
Okay, here we are showing starting an SAP NetWeaver AS ABAP without an ABAP central services instance. So there is no central services instance, but we have central instance and dialog instance there. So first thing is what is happening is just doing is SAP start SRV. After that, you are starting the central instance and here you can see that the messages server is started and then the dialog instance are started so that is the sequence for ABAP without its central instance okay this is showing starting an SAP NetWeaver AS ABAP with a central instance so central instance gets started first and then uh, central services instance then central instance and then the dialog instances are started okay in 7.1 onwards this there is nothing called central services instance or central instance it is renamed to primary application server and additional application server instance so that is the difference so just take note because moving forward these are the names that will be used okay start process for an individual instance and evaluation of profile it is basically a BAP plus java showing the sequence how it is starting Okay, then starting an AS Java that is having no ABAP but, but only Java system. Okay, so if it is only Java system, it is showing how the system start takes place. We will cover them in the subsequent slide. Basically, we will log on to the system to show you guys how this works. Okay, so let's go to the next slide where it is showing how the SAP start SRV is starting rest of the process then SAP CP is started after that database is checked and if it is not started it is started and then default and instance profiles are started okay then this is the figure about the SAP MMC here you can see the system ID database then you have central instance of an AS ABAP plus Java system okay in Unix actually you have the stop st stop SAP and start SAP script which is used for stopping and starting SAP okay these are the parameters which can be used like st uh, start SAP DB start SAP R3 J2E also with these parameter uh, you can do individual system stop and start okay so one major thing to take note is that before you stop any SAP system make sure that you check the status of the users which are already logged in the system using SM04 okay check using EL08 check the background processing using SM37 find out which jobs are already running okay find out which jobs are active and which is planned to be triggered soon check the update SM31 see if anything is there check the external connectivity and send a system message using SM02 that the system is going for a restart okay that's it about the theoretical aspect of it let's log into a system and I'll show you how this works so let's go to a ABAP system here you can see this DC1 this is an ABAP system this has a database instance and the central instance okay if we do a stop start they are started in this manner that is database is start we need to st stop start the database then this particular thing is started okay this system has an java instance as well here you can see that these are the java instance which is there okay in the process list you see the message server and the nq server is there and this particular process it has the J control and the gateway process so that is about this uh, ABAP and Java system so let me show you the dual stack system how it is in the dual stack system so this is a dual stack system okay in a dual stack system this is a database this is your Java 
uh, ABAP instance, this is your central instance and the processes you can see that these are the processes that are there. Okay, in the Java stack you have these processes are there in the Java stack. Okay, so and stopping and starting is pretty straightforward. You just do a uh, select the SID, right click and just do a stop and for starting just do a start. So that's how the stop and start works. Okay, so that is probably I'll just show you one of the system how to stop it. Okay, so I'm starting it. Here you can see that shutdown. Do you want to do a hard system or soft? So let's select the default option. And here you can see that the stop wait is 300 second that is it will wait for 300 second for this process to time out okay in this case the first time you connect it will ask for a password on a particular day okay just make sure that the password is correct okay so i am stopping this particular system this is a refresh button using which we can see if the stop is already started or not. So basically it takes some time depending on how many applications are running. Here you can see that the status has turned yellow. If you go to the process you can see that the gateway is stopped. Okay, dispatcher is about to go down. Okay, so You can see that dispatcher is has turned yellow. It will be going down next, and after that is the message server will go down. So this is basically the sequence in which the stop happens. Okay, so depending on the how many resources are there in the system, the system will take its own time to stop the different processes which are running say for example if you have 100 applications so all the applications will be loaded into the memory or the swap and when you are shutting down it will be removed in a sequential manner so depending on the number of application number of users it has to report number of active sessions the time it takes to stop varies from system to system Okay, so let's wait for a couple of seconds. Okay, in the meantime, I'll show you where the logs are written for this. So if I just go to this folder, here you can see which folder you have the logs. Here you have the user, you have SAP, you have the SID. Under the SID, you can see this is the directory structure. So this is the directory structure under the work folder you will see that okay bootstrap is written you have the dispatcher log you have the icf that is icf framework log you have the icm log j control log so these are the basically the stop start logs for the system okay here you can see that this has stopped okay this da is uh, the host agent which is there on the system. So let's start this SID. You can just click on this start okay, and it will start. It will take some time to start but you will see that this is starting. Okay, So this is taking some time to start. Let's see. Let's refresh this process. Here you can see that this is taking time to start. So if you see this process list here you can see that dispatcher is the last one. Okay, gateway is started, message server is started. Okay, and in the log folder all the logs will be written in that sequence. Here you can see okay, if I just click on the date modified Okay, so this is dispatcher is coming up. If you open this, you will see 
how the logging is taking place for this system what is happening with the start sequence okay here you can see for starting it's the process this is a java argument is created here so depending how much memory is allocated and all this stuff okay for the startup what type of memory what is the system id startup sequence host name and all that information okay so that is about you can see that the other information other files are created like this is your dialog instance log so w4 dialog process j control java control log rfc log this is server zero log and this is the output for the server zero basically for the java instance okay if i come here i'll if i just refresh this you can see the system has started successfully okay that's what actually i wanted to cover in this particular session thanks for joining and have a nice day bye bye